Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Joy and I'm an American living in England, living my very best Harry Potter life. Today I am very excited to show you J.K. Rowling's Wizarding World Movie Magic Extraordinary Places and Fascinating J.K. Rowling's Wizarding Magic <laughs> Extraordinary People and Fantastic Why can't I read today? Extraordinary people in fascinating places. I'm very excited to do a run through with you because this will be in a future giveaway. And if you don't know already, I'm actually in the middle of running a Harry Potter giveaway over my Instagram. Speaking of which, go ahead and subscribe to me here so you don't miss any future content and subscribe to me over on Instagram so you don't miss any future giveaways, including this book. All right, without further ado, let's get into the book. All right, J.K. Rowling's Wizarding World Movie Magic, Extraordinary People in Fascinating Places. So this does cover Harry Potter and Fantastic Beasts. So if you were just a fan of one, you are gonna get some of the other. Let's go ahead and pop it open. We'll check out the pages and the pictures. So far, so good. We have a table of contents here, which also has a nice illustration of what seems to be a dough just across the lake from Hogwarts. Starting with the introduction, we have a map of Hogwarts. We have some pictures of the Fantastic Beasts cast. We have Molly Weasley in one of her iconic outfits. We have some more behind the scenes of the goblins getting their special effect makeup on. Uh, what is this? They do talk about the graphic designers as well. So starting out with part one, Fantastic Beasts and where to find them. Here is Newt Scamander. Let's move this over a little bit. So there is Newt in his perfectly iconic blue pea coat, which I absolutely love. I have an orange one that I pretend is Newt's, but it's not. So what's really cool about this book is it does cover, it gives each character their own pages, and some of them have little paper goods that come in it as well. So this one comes with some stickers. It talks about Newt's coat. So in the original Fantastic Beasts film, so this book actually came out before Crimes of Grindelwald did, that's how old you know it is at this point, um, but it's still great. Uh, they talk about Newt's coat actually never changed in the entire movie. His outfit stayed exactly the same, except sometimes the collar was popped or his, his pants were tucked into his boots, things like that, subtle changes. About his case, so it seems that each character has a two-page spread from what I can see. Ooh, an identity card. This is really neat. Jacob. Ooh, that's really cool. I didn't realize just how interactive this book was. This seems like a really good read. Queenie is one of my favorite characters, if not my favorite character from the Fantastic Beasts film, although I really do like Newt. So cool. This would make a neat little poster for your room. Percival. Wow, yeah, no, it does seem like there's something on each page to be interacted with. I didn't understand that when I got it. How cool is that? The Magical Congress of the United States of America, Mac USA. So, as we know, the Fantastic Beasts films take place in, I believe, what is New York City. That's really neat. Oh my gosh. Emergency message. I think these are more stickers here. be very careful because I have a candle just over here <laughs> but don't worry I shall not ruin the book I care too much for it yes that's right New York 1926 we have the New York ghost newspaper here I kind of wish I had bought a copy of this for myself now because I want all the paper things inside oh okay now we're moving on to my personal favorite Harry Potter Here we go, and we start out with Harry Potter. It has a picture of him as a baby. Here is Harry right next to it. it. Talks about Harry's scar, his eyes, his glasses, the stinging jinx. That's kind of random that they did that, but I guess they're just talking about special effects and like effects makeup that they did during the Harry Potter films. Um, this seems to be a, what are they called? Uh, I went to film school and I can't remember what things are called. <laughs> um, this is like an illustration board. What is it called? A storyboard. There we go. This is a storyboard of when they reach Grimmauld Place. 
So it's kind of like a little comic and that's really cool. <laughs> but they use this to um, show, so the director of photography will often use this to reference back to when they are filming so you know what kind of shots they want, what sort of angles you want, just to keep it all cohesive. There is quite a lot of planning that goes into movie making as I'm sure you can imagine so things like this happen. I love how illustrated and detailed these all are. I've never actually seen any that were this detailed and it really looks just like a comic book. The Dursleys. My husband loves the Dursleys. Well, he mostly loves Vernon. He gets very excited when he comes onto the screen. I do think he's quite funny as well. So the Dursleys did not get any paper goods. I am offended for them. But, okay, moving on to Ron, who does get a poster, and I think, is it the Chudley? Yes, it is the Chudley Cannons, yes. So it is Ron's favorite national, international, I don't know. It is Ron Weasley's favorite Quidditch team. Here's a lovely illustration of Ron with slugs coming out of his mouth. Hermione Granger, one of my absolute favorite characters. She is played by the lovely Emma Watson, and it only talks a little bit about her, which is a little unfortunate. I kind of wish there was a bit more. We're moving on to King's Cross Station. So as the title said, it does talk about different locations in the Harry Potter and Fantastic Beasts series. I do hope I'm not going too quickly for you guys. I hope you're getting enjoyment out of just listening to me talk about it a little bit. And um, I think from now on, I will also read you some passages from it. So here is Rubius Hagrid. Let's see what it says. Robbie Coltrane's double, Martin Bayfield, played the young Hagrid in Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. I was wondering, actually, I didn't know that, that he had a younger double, but it makes sense. It did look quite like him, though, didn't it? Here's Hagrid's hut with the monster book of monsters. Ooh, Diagon Alley. I think people tend to like Diagon Alley more than Hogsmeade, which kind of blows my mind because I love both. <laughs> Diagon Alley was one of the first sets created for the Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. Director Chris Columbus wanted Diagon Alley to feel as if it had been there for hundreds of years and that it went on forever. So something neat is near where I live, um, York, England, they have a place called The Shambles and I do have some videos talking about it and I can show you around the shops if you'd like to click on that just above. And Diagon Alley, uh, The Shambles in New York was the inspiration for the film version of Diagon Alley. You will hear all of uh, the UK basically claiming that every alleyway is the inspiration for Diagon Alley, but I believe the one in York, the Shambles, is the one specifically for the film. So that's kind of neat that I live near there, and you can see it in the video how similar they are. So here we are at Ollivander's. Um, he is a great character. That's all I really have to say about that. I do wish there was more scenes with Ollivander's, although he does have a bit of a creepy vibe to him at times, but he's just kind of one of those weird geniuses to me. All right, Gringotts Bank. Harry is taken by Hagrid to Gringotts Wizarding Bank in Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone in order to get money to pay for his school supplies. The scene was filmed in a real life location in London called Australia House. So you guys may have heard this before. Ooh, here's some galleons and things. I happen to have some replicas of those. So this does not come with the book, but I thought I'd share it with you anyway. This is the Noble Collection coins from Gringotts that are used in the wizarding world. Very cool. The Great Hall. So now we have finally made it to Hogwarts. The Great Hall is such a beautiful place. I have another video in which I visit the studio tour London and you got to stand in the Great Hall and it is magnificent. It is beautiful. I especially love it dressed up at Christmas time, which is what it looks like in the video I have posted. So definitely go check that out if you haven't seen it already. Ooh, Draco. One of, uh, I feel like, such an underrated character. I mean, not really. Obviously, a lot of people like Draco, but a lot of people also hate Draco. I just think he's great. <laughs> Is he a little snot-nosed brat? Yes. But do I also feel bad for him? Yes. I do have some sympathy for Draco because he is a child. So here is Draco, it said fitting in. When not in his school robes, Draco wore dark tailored clothes made of rich materials, including a fur hat and a silk tuxedo. Tom Felton really received a lot of fan mail asking him to wear different colors, but knowing his character, he said, there's no occasion where black doesn't fit in as far as Draco's concerned. That's a neat little tidbit there. 
Neville Longbottom and Luna Lovegood. So each of them gets one page spreads. Here is the flying lesson scene from the Philosopher's Stone. I love this jumper of Neville's, which comes along in the Deathly Hallows. This video is going to be pretty long. This book is like halfway through. All right, moving on to Luna Lovegood. There is a tiny paper replica of the Quibbler in here. Oh my gosh, whoever wins this, you could totally turn this into a Christmas ornament. Just saying, it would look awesome. Wow, that took a really long time to film. <laughs> I think this might be my longest video so far, but worth it, I hope. Um, and if you've stuck around to the end, um, you're amazing and thank you. Tell me what you thought of this book. Do you have this book? I know there's more in the series. Let me know if you'd like to do more flip throughs like this. Um, yeah, I have a third, the third one as well, which I think might be more interesting um, for me anyway. It's the artifacts one. Um, so I'd love to go through that with you guys as well. And yeah, <laughs> uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to hit subscribe if you haven't already. And I will see you in my next video. Bye.